This is uh, very bad today. She had to be home. But something that Patty always says to me is, "What well, if something happens to me, you'll take it." Like, well, God's trying to tell you to that I didn't fill in the blank there. Um, I remember once my mother said something. My mother can get uh, you know may not have always seen this side. My mom can be a little sarcastic sometimes. And she once said to me, "How come you ministers, when you move, when you change your location?" You always say, oh, God has called me somewhere else. Where everyone else in the world just gets another job. So the question for today, and I love to play with Lil, is how do we know when it's just stuff? And how do we know when God really, you know, working with our lives? And it's a good question to wonder about just uh, what's the difference between the regular, ordinary stuff and when we think God is speaking. Because there's no way you can know for certain. So, what are the guides you use? What are the things you use? And, and at what kind of moments you're like, wow, that's just not your normal stuff. Maybe God's speaking to you at this point. So, that's the thing for today. We're going to talk about that. There's a lot of wonderful stories in the Bible about uh, blindness and, and people being cured of blindness. So, I'm going to talk about, yeah, when, when, when God and Jesus cure blindness and also how we see. And I'm going to use the kind of metaphor. How do we see God in our lives? And what does that mean? When is it just a normal day? And when is God trying to speak? So we'll play with that. First song, one you know pretty well. Oh, so I have to walk right by. Come on through, sir. All right, I'm going to do what the Spirit says to you, and please sing along with me. I did 
teach you to drive, didn't I? I'll take it all back now. Oh, I'd, I'd, put, I'd repress those memories there. All things right.
to forgive others as well. There's a wonderful quote that uh, Cassie found that I want to share with you. It's actually from the, uh, uh, the Gita, which is a, a famous piece, piece of Hindu scripture, ironically. If you want to see the brave, look to those who can return love for hatred. If you want to see the heroic, look to those who can forgive. Because truly, forgiveness is not for the faint of heart. And there are days even the strongest of us just can't do it. Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. I, I like this. I actually read a good chunk of uh, the, the Gita in, uh, uh, back in grad school. But I, I like, if you want to see the brave, look to those who can return love for hatred. If you want to see the heroic, look to those who can forgive. Forgiving is not for the faint of heart. Forgiving sometimes is difficult even for those who are trying. There are days even when we want to be good Christian people where forgiving someone who hurt us can be difficult, it's not a strong enough word, where we struggle with it. And that's also a part of our humanness as well. So we're going to take a moment and uh, just pray about ways that we can be better and pray ways that we can be more forgiving because clearly it is not a simple thing. I never want to leave you with the message of, oh, just go out and forgive everyone who's hurt you. It is a process and a long one within ourselves. But it's one that starts with God forgiving us the things we've done wrong and us being honest with ourselves when we have not done things as good as we should have. And then it extends to others. So let us have a silent prayer now where we consider ways that we have been forgiven and ways that we can forgive. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Our God has reached out for forgiveness to us, even when we've been in very bad places, and asked us to work towards forgiveness of others and to reconciliation, even when it's extremely difficult. Thank God you made it now.
you know, I've been a juvenile diabetic for well over 30 years now. So it's kind of like the things they want me to do and the results they always want, it, it doesn't always work as well for me in the real world. You kind of go back and forth. And I understand their perspective, a uh, certain book knowledge, and but there's a certain perspective of, and there's a Nobody's lot. Nobody's the same. Well, that too, yeah. It was. Lane, you have a deep and wonderful thought in your head. Well, I was just going to say, because I know we don't get political materials, but I just spread this voting and it was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stress. Thank you, Lane. There's a lot of stress around the upcoming vote period. Yes, How is it going to pan out? A number of people don't want to be in voting and polling places. How is it going to work out with the mailing thing? How's it? Lane, that is one of the best prayers I've heard in a while. I'd like to bring that up. That is good. Um, in other words, for everyone, that they can safely vote, that those votes can count, and that we as a nation together can make a fair decision that is reflective of all of our thoughts. Like, good or bad, up or down, we have always held together as a nation because we felt, well, we're all in this together. We got together, we made a choice, and here we are. And let's keep that much of it, that faith going on. Thank you, Lane. That's awesome. Other prayers we could lift up for family, friends, etc. around here. All of Mary Lou's girls. Yeah, this is true. All, all um, Mary Lou's family got, yeah, a big bunch of them got exposed. We don't know yet. Got exposed to someone who was later confirmed to have the coronavirus. So, let's keep them in our prayers, hopefully. Well, Robert has me every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. Not, not just a slight exposure. She works with them on a regular basis. So, let's uh, keep them all in our prayers and hope that... Uh, Nobody gets it. Yeah, sweetie. No, that's it. Oh, that's I'm you grabbing the camera. You were uh, See, I don't know if you're raising your hand or grabbing the camera. The, it looks the same from my perspective. Sorry. So it's, it's all good. It's all right. Other prayers we'd like to lift up this time together. All right. Uh, a wonderful uh, line from uh, 1 Timothy I want to share with you. Uh, I want everyone everywhere to lift innocent hands towards heaven and pray without being angry or arguing with each other. And... Uh, Timothy was uh, dealing with a church that uh, anger and a little bit of disagreement went uh, was common. So uh, Which church? Timothy's? Yeah. Do that. To me. I gotta go look that up. Oh, you gotta stump me up here. We're gonna. I don't know Timothy here. That took it. There's a number of actually most of the letters that you read, especially the Pauline ones, the Paul. Paul's letters end in I N S, meaning, and I always taught that the confirmation class. Tell me you remember that one, Lane. No. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever Paul wrote a letter, it was to a place. In other words, that's how yeah. they count. So yeah. the church is torn. The church, yeah. And sometimes we don't know from the letters. I have to often look that one up. But um, often the leaders were either writing to churches or, or, or people who were involved with churches as a way to help solve disputes and things of that nature. If you read, especially Paul's um, letters, he is often, you can just tell by the way he's writing, he's trying to settle disputes between people in an early church. And so, so when we say, oh, churches today, they argue all the time, things like that, it, it, in a way it's always been that way. You get, you know, 10, 20 people in a room, um, even if they're on the same page or cause in life, they won't, um, the arguments are, are common. And uh, it was common for Paul to go to a church, help set it up, get it together, go somewhere else, hear through the rumor mill of problems, and send them a letter trying to help them with those conflicts. Ironically, all the other rumor mills of the is not no longer existed. We don't know what was going on. The only thing we have is this letter. We kind of extrapolate back about what those arguments must have been like. Some of the most famous things we read about in Paul, um, uh, that wonderful line in uh, wonderful line about. Uh, uh, that we're all members of the body of Christ, and the hand should not be envious of the eye, and the eye should not think it's better than the or the foot, things like that. All of that is a beautiful metaphor, which comes out of um, him trying to solve arguments about who is more important, and things like that. Uh, there's that wonderful line in uh, 1 Corinthians 13 that we always blow over, we always hear at weddings, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm but a, a noisy gong, plain symbol. Part of that was about a debate in the early church about speaking in tongues. Something that still happens in some churches today. Meaning, um, back then, people's meal were so filled with the Spirit, they would just get up and speak in, in what they called tongues, which was a language no one really understood, but they felt it was God sort of speaking through them and other people might be able to interpret. That line that we hear, and we don't really understand so much, 
is all about the argument of whether that should be happening. There's a huge argument about whether people should be able to do that. And what the, does that make sense? Paul was literally trying to intervene on that and give a voice to both sides of the argument. So, yeah, a whole lot of uh, lines, especially in the letters to the early church, were, in, you can just tell by the way they wrote, were encouragements to help people resolve arguments peacefully. And so people like Paul and a lot of the other uh, later biblical writers, Timothy and the gang, are trying to be diplomats in some ways, trying to get people to see each other's points of view. So, hey, that was cool. And stop stumping me. Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Um, so let us pray. Oh, God, we come to you this morning. And we thank you for a time to be together, a wonderful day. Help us to reach out and love and care to the people around us. Sometimes, dear God, someone so close to us is hurting and we don't even know it. Help us to find and reach out to them. Dear God, we... We ask also that you give strength to those who feel weak, that you give joy to those who feel sad. For all of us who are early voting, who have, are considering voting, who are worried about going out in crowds voting, help there to be a good and fair way to do all this so that we can still be a family, a country together. We're truly we come together and make decisions together, and it's always held together somewhat because we're all a part of that process. May we all still feel a part of that process, and that our voice matters. Dear God, we lift up these and so many more prayers to you from our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And as children of God together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to share with you, uh, uh, again, scripture and stories today are about um, blindness. Talking today, I'm going to use blindness, sort of a little bit of some metaphor today. But if you can't readily see God come down saying, I want you to do this, how do we know God's talking in our lives? So, uh, here's a neat line from the book of Isaiah I will lead the blind on roads they have never known, I will guide them on paths they have never traveled. Their road is dark and rough, but I will give light to keep them from stumbling. This is my solemn promise. All right, um, hey. I met with Jen. Come on up here, Jen. I'm going to have you talk about this song a little bit, and we'll uh, make it wonderful together. Jen came to me, um, I guess it was a few weeks ago now, and said, well, we got to get a song going, and we, we played with it last evening, and uh, it's been a long time since we sang this one, a very long time. It's been, yeah, and so, and uh, I remember, uh, I barely remembered it, heard it go, oh, yeah, baby. And uh, anyway, where did you first hear this too? I was on uh, Gay Fair Gospel Hour. Okay. And I just like the words. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, so you just kind of hold it to the floor and who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Nice. Are you ready? Mm -hmm.
and a crowd develops around him, and little by little he senses that someone special is walking through. And he seizes that moment. And obviously, it's like Jesus. He follows Jesus from that moment on, he's able to see, and it is one of those wonderful miracle stories. But it's, what strikes me as interesting is that it's a miracle story that started out as just a normal, mundane day. Now, I started by talking about a comment my mom made once. How come you ministers are always being called by God to somewhere else when everyone else just, quote, gets another job? What's the difference? We talk often that God works in our lives. People say to me often, like, well, you know, maybe God is trying to tell you this or this event. Like I said, uh, if Patty, if you're watching this, this is for you. Because Patty's famous for saying things to me like, oh, well, this happened to you. God's trying to tell you to. Every time I get sick, every time I get a bug or a cold or a flu, and I go, God's trying to tell you to slow down, Greg. And I'm like, yes, Patty, I'll go home and slow down. So, and I, I wanted to ask her this question very specifically, but I'll, but I'll ask you, I mean, how do we know or sense that this is a special moment where God may be trying to interact with our lives, and when's it just another day? When are we called by God to somewhere else, and when do we just get another job? When is it, well, when is it just another day, and when is it a moment that God is speaking to us? So, many of you have, 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 have dealt with this issue on one level or another. So, I will ask a number of questions around, but what's the difference between a mundane moment and a moment where God is speaking to you? How do you know? I mean, obviously, I mean, there's no, God never comes down on a big cloud and says, I'm going to do this. Today is not a normal day for you, Lane. Today your truck's going to work well and it's my miracle. Today is not a normal day for you. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, come on, just watch it. <laughs> but how do we know if God is interacting with our lives? Or well, how do we know it's just a normal day? Or is there even a difference between the two? And now I threw this out. And I listened for brilliant thoughts on the subject. Tough question, isn't it? I knew when I thought of this, I, I was like, I don't know, that's a tough one. Because on the one hand, isn't God always working with our lives? Well, yeah, no, we talk about that. So, okay, that's fair enough. But you gotta admit, some days feel a little more inspired than others. Some days things happen to make us think about our lives and where we're going, and other days just aren't as exciting. So is that our problem, that we're not seeing God, or is there just less going on? Yeah, please. And by the way, at any moment, if you have a brilliant idea, please come out with it, because I am part of, part of this sermon. I'm worried. Sometimes I got the, the, like, the real good answer in the back of my mind. Not today. I'm listening. Like, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I can't imagine three um, kids. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's been times where we've had, like, you're down in, like, your last money. Yeah. Like, um, and I've talked to a friend at work, and she's very, um, about the economic thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I just I just give it all to God. Uh -huh. go, to bed, go to bed, and it never fails. He always comes through for me that I get a check in the mail from insurance, or I get a check for so sometimes, by the way, hello, good, thanks for joining us. Good to see you, my man. Um, so sometimes, yes, sometimes it takes us being in a, a kind of a bad way, too. And, I, and I'm as guilty of this as anyone. So this is not a, uh, a uh, thou shalt not do this kind of moment. This is one of those I, I feel you moments where we just go along and everything feels normal, and something difficult reminds us that we're always leaning on God, and we especially feel that way at that moment. And I'm with you there. Sometimes I need to be really backed into a corner to say, oh, that's right, I really need to be leaning on God, and I will then put it out there. And then I'm watching for something to happen, and inevitably it does. And I think it's beautiful, nice, nice. Yeah, uh, Jeanine, I would uh, and to catch you up to speak, kind of, sir, by the way, the name's Greg. What's your name? Jazz. Jazz, really? Oh, 
Chad, like the character that we know. Not Chad, <laughs> hey, it's a great name. It's a favorite name of a character in the show. Line, so excellent. Um, Chaz, um, so we are chatting about how do we know when God is working in our lives and when it's just another normal day. Or, better yet, if God's always working in our lives, how come, how come some days feel more special and holy than others? So we're playing with that right now. And I'm famous for throwing out questions that I don't have easy answers to and just hope something happens. So, uh, but anyway, Janine often comes out with brilliant stuff. So, Janine, you know, what is your thought in your head right now? Well, uh, my thought in my head right now is that um, I don't know, and I can't tell. And so I, I pray about that a lot. That, um, not that I would know, but that God would work in my life and lead me to, my, uh, to what I'm supposed to be doing or helping. And, um, and so I think it's important to pray about it. Because I don't think we can tell. Fair enough. And I think we do have choices, and the choices we make are important. Mm -hmm. And even the little ones, like which corner that guy was going to sit at. Very much so, yes. And, and what really, um, and again, what really strikes me is um, the man is not, again, he's not expecting a miracle that morning. And so he just sits at the corner, and what he always does, and this choice he makes leading up to it, and then something miraculous happens. So, sometimes, it's hard to know. So, it, it, it may be part of us. And so, praying is really good about it. Because sometimes, like, okay, God, I know I'm supposed to listen for your guidance in my life every day. But today just feels like normal humdrum stuff. And I don't feel particularly inspired. So, I'm going to try. And you're right. How do you know if something happening right now is going to lead to something really cool in the future? Or, if we're just missing something. Yeah. So here's an example. It's not, it's not a miracle, but when I met Jane, it was in, a, um, in, in the context of I was working for an agency and she needed help, so I was sent there. And after her going there for a couple of times, I just felt real strong with that. I was going to really, really making a choice if this person was going to be a friend or not. Yeah. You know, that there, was, there was just a lot of things we had in common and um, things that we could talk about. The thing that is kind of miraculous is that she's the one who drove me to get this operation, this ear thing. Mm -hmm. And it's really made a big difference in my life to be able to hear sometimes mm -hmm. out, of, out of this side. Or I can hook it up because of technology. I can hook it up to the TV or I can hook it up to my phone. And so those conversations and that hearing is really good. And it wasn't. If I may play with your story a little bit, this is actually a really good one. This is one of those moments where, and I know a little bit about it because I've heard a lot of the, uh, the story of your coming to a friendship with Jane from Jane's perspective. And so there is a certain, um, what looks random about it, meaning an agency simply hooked you up with Jane saying, oh, here's a person that could use some assistance and you're a person who likes to volunteer for this sort of thing. So, ta -da. Um, but what happened, and it wasn't instant, it wasn't, it was, it took time, but what happened was a very special and even sort of divinely touched friendship. So the, the both of you have gained a lot from, even more than, you know, people in our culture want to talk about to each other. There's a lot of uh, neat things going on there and really blessed things. And so what's interesting about that is it starts off as a normal interaction meeting. This is an agency hooking this person up with this person on uh, mutual needs, and off you go. But before long, it becomes much more than that. And what I think is, is neat about that is it starts off as something mundane and ends up becoming something very special. And sometimes you can only tell that looking back. There was, I mean, I don't know. You're, some people can sense if something's going to change in their lives and they will walk into a room or something. I'm not. I often have to look back and say, wow, that was such a very special moment. And I didn't really perceive that until much later. So, um, was it the uh, uh, Christian existentialist philosopher Kierkegaard once said, um, you can only understand life backwards, but it must be lived forward. Meaning, so many things as we're going through them seem mundane and normal, and then later you look back on them, and they become very special, and realize that, wow, God was speaking to me that moment God was doing something special and uh, I just didn't know it or didn't see it or could only see it now looking back kind of neat so thank you
It's a great story. I, I've thought of that often, actually. In this book. So. I think it's so much easier to see it when you look back. Because you don't, you don't recognize it at the moment. Yeah. And there are so many things that seem awful and terrible at that one at, while you're living it. And then you realize later, if that didn't happen, you would not be in something better, you know, currently. Lots of examples of that. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so hard to see it while you're living it. Um, and, but when you look back, it's like, oh, if I, didn't, I, if I didn't go through this tough time, I would not be at this stage. Yeah. Oh, see, so the difficult stuff mm -hmm. is, is in some ways molding you to see God moving through your life yeah. and things of that nature. That's another area we never even talked about and still applies to the story mm -hmm. because the man's expression of joy only comes about in some ways because he has been part of amazing healing, which he can only appreciate after living years as a blind person, which in that culture... I mean, this is long before the modern conveniences that help people who have lost sight in this world. Um, he was completely dependent upon everyone else. That whole notion of, uh, I mean, there's a reason why he spent his days on the corner begging. It was the only way he could survive. And so the miracle of Jesus giving his sight back is, is powerful because he has spent his life, or so much of his life, we have no idea in the story how long Bartimaeus was blind, but we know it was long enough for him to be known in the community as the guy that sits on the corner begging. So clearly quite a while. And so for him, that miracle of feeling God working through his life is in part brought out because of the pain that leads up to that moment. Nice one. What about if the pain is afterwards? Oh, you're going to throw it out. Maybe they're throwing a monkey wrench into this one, but it's a good monkey wrench. Yes. <clears throat> I got up one Sunday morning, and I just got it in my head that I had to go see my grandparents. And I'm calling, Brian was working, I'm calling everybody to see, because it's enduring, and I don't want to drive that far by myself. And my kids were young. They were like three and five. And... I don't know why, I'm, I, I couldn't find anybody to go with me, so it was just me and the two girls. And we went to my grandma's, and this is how I see my grandma every time I think of her. She's sitting in her orange rocking chair, mm -hmm. with her hands out for Robin to come sit on the lap. Robin had a special place in her heart because she was the fourth grandch great grandchild, but she was the first great grandchild that let her hold them. Oh, okay. So she loved her a lot, and she actually left her money in her will. Mm -hmm. And um, my grandma died that week. So it was after? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was like a two days after we saw her. She died. So two days before she passed on, Robin got to walk in the room and the whole, whole, and the whole, yes. So, okay, so there's a switch right there. So it's not pain before that, but pain after. The pain came after, and we did take Robin to the wake. Yep. And she would sit there and look at Grandma. Why is she there? And then so we had to explain death to her, like I said. How old was Robin? Was about five. five. Uh, okay, yeah, this is, yep. And she, she started crying, and I want Grandma back. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, we all want Grandma back, honey, but we don't get a choice. So it was also having to explain to her the fact of loss. Mm -hmm. And then my husband got mad because I let her go. And I said, no, I don't. You can't just take somebody out of their life and not expect them to want to know why they aren't there anymore. So he got he got mad at me for taking her to the way. But Robin has learned to accept it very well. She understands death and she accepts it. 
Does Robin remember, I'm just on Plymouth, does Robin remember seeing Grandma that last time? Yes. I don't know if she remembers seeing Grandma. She remembers seeing Grandma in the casket, but I don't know if she remembers. Yeah. But like, I close my eyes and there she is. Yep. And actually, that's a, actually a fairly good memory for me to have of my grandmother. It's not a bad well, it, it's got the two together. I mean, it's bittersweet at the same time. It is, yeah. It is on some level, a precious moment before she but passes But I don't know what possessed me to have to, no. to, have to go. Yeah. And that's how I felt, was okay. I have to go. So you have a sixth sense that no matter what, today, even though Duran is, what, a good hour away, yeah. I'm going to get in the car, and even though no one else can go with me, I'm going to get in the car, take Robin, and take another one here. Really? Yes. Cassie, okay, that's enough. And we're going. And it's one of those moments where Mama makes the choice and no one says no to this. And then yeah. when she died that, that it's just it just felt eerie. Like, how did I know that something? Yeah. And ironically, and again, it's one of those things looking back, sometimes you see much more than when it happened, because, because the moment takes on so much more significance now, after knowing yeah. that it was your last. That's a really beautiful story, thank you. Now, you know, excuse me, but if I ignore Dave for too long, you get really yes. upset, so I... Yeah. <laughs> that is a long, ongoing tale one day. I, uh, he teased me once for putting him on the spot too much, and then another time I let him off the hook, and he was like, oh, I feel left out. So, Dave, I want to hear words of wisdom from you. Yes, I agree with you entirely. I work in retail a lot now. People have always got to complain about something, but we'll leave that go. Um, to walk, to look around us, though, in our day-to-day -day lives, seeing God influence it, inevitably, you do come to the question of, God, why did you allow this painful thing to happen? Could have been loss of a loved one, could be um, a particularly painful thing in our lives that we just don't like, period. And inevitably, even good people in the Bible have looked at their situation, looked at God and said, why are you doing this? And I remember the story of Job just screams at me. Job is considered in, 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 in the Bible a very good person, described him by God as, as one of his most faithful. But in his most difficult moments, even he looked up at the heavens and said, for goodness sakes, why are you doing this? And um, this is something we all go through as people who wonder how God is working through our lives at this moment. And again, sometimes you're looking back at it and saying, oh, wow, that painful event did this good thing, and things like that. And that can be a wonderful exercise. But on the other hand, 
Sometimes we, even as the best Christians, even as people who are really trying, end up looking up at them and saying, God, why are you doing this? And that is a normal part, I think, of our walk with God. It may not be you know, our finest moments, but it's honest to admit sometimes we just, in our prayer life, look up at God and complain. And that's part of who we are as well. So, thank you. Yeah, please. I was like, Chaz, what, what, what are you thinking here? Why well, we're sorry. Um, <laughs> God is everywhere in every day. And I see God every day. And I love the Lord. Satan doesn't really focus on the people that Satan has. Satan focuses on the people that Satan doesn't have. Oh, okay. And I often find that the closer I get to God, the more I see Satan. Mm -hmm. And in the course of the day, this is every day, every day, in the course of the day, I can really get tired of what Satan. I notice in the morning when I wake up, I start to be very strong. You're not the first to, to express this idea. The idea that, and it comes in a few different ways, at the least, those who are praying and giving their lives to God are certainly not um, uh, exempt from the pain that, that everyone feels and the, those difficulties. Um, and so, yeah, some have gone as far as to tell me, look, Satan is looking for people who are close to God, and the closer you are to God, the more you will face certain challenges and things of that nature. And so, yes. And, uh, uh, and as the day goes on, and the, at the end of the day, I'd love to, I remember there was a wonderful thing I read uh, on the internet, what was it? Dear God, I am grateful. I have um, I have uh, lived my life today. I have not sworn at anyone. I have not wished anyone ill. I have had love for everyone I've interacted with. But I'm about ready to get out of bed now, and so <laughs> so I like that particular quote because it reminds you that yes, as we get fatigued, as we get tired, as we get seeing God working through our world, uh, knowing if you can you can abstractly know it's there. Oh, I remember that preacher told me that. But sometimes. <clears throat> It feels more difficult than others, and you are not the, the first to express that one to me. It's a, uh, just, yeah, some days, even if we put all our faith in God leading us in this world, it can feel like we are uh, um, overcome by other things. And so, I think part of what we can take away from this is to always look at the various things that is going on because you never know what's going to be a special moment. Sometimes you don't know until long afterwards that it's a special moment. Sometimes we think we are just going through the muck and the mire, and we realize that God is doing something special to get us through. Sometimes we feel we're at the end of our rope, only to realize that God is saving us at the last second. But you never know what moment that looks mundane now might be special later. Dan, you've been awful quiet over there. You've given us a lot of music there, but how do you, and you've talked about me with this often with me, um, how do you know when God is interacting with your world? Or do you just assume God is always interacting and hope to figure it out? Well, with this chronic pain that I have, I always, most days,
begins to focus our mind to seeing God working in things where we might not so much before. But I agree. And but I agree also, Chaz, there's that fatigue factor. I, I, I'm sorry. I really some of your words resonate with me because and there's uh, I work in retail. We're very patient the first few hours. <laughs> but you get to the end of a 10-hour shift, I'm like, oh, God, please don't give me grief right now. But yes, we are human beings, and we feel fatigue. And this goes into our spiritual lives. God may not be there less at certain times, but we may be less able to see it. We may less, be less able to perceive it. Lane is a very good and loving human being until the four-wheel drive goes out in his truck. And because we all feel a certain... Lane, what, what, what are the things in life that would make you less charitable than the normal good intention person that I see all the time? A lot of things. <laughs> Lane doesn't want to list them all right now, and that's all right. So. Um, one thing this story teaches us is that anything can be a moment where God is inter interacting with our lives. Sometimes... We just don't see it because we're not looking for it. Sometimes we're too tired. Sometimes we haven't given up enough to God. Maybe we haven't prayed enough. But I think every moment has the potential for, um, for God to interact with our lives. And sometimes we just don't know until we pass that moment. And we look back and say, oh my goodness, God was doing something really neat at that moment. And I only now realize. Bartimaeus goes to his corner for just another day. But before that day is out, he's experienced an amazing miracle. I bet you when he woke up that morning, he had no idea that the Son of God was going to turn his life around. But there it was. So too with us. You never know. All right. Um, last thoughts. I don't want to cut anyone off here. We gave that time for a last song and things like that. I appreciate your comments. I intentionally threw out an amazingly tough question today to see what would happen. And uh, I am, I am, that was fun, thank you. All right, uh, and with that, I'm going to do a song. Again, it's more of a secular tune, but it's a neat tune reminding us of the joy that's all around us. Can we just open our eyes to it? So, song is what a wonderful world. I'm sure you've heard this one before, so feel free to sing it along with me here.
Remember, brothers and sisters, anything can be a moment where God reaches into our lives. Some days we can't see. Some days, like Bartimaeus, we are figuratively blind. And we get up and we just live life like normal. Sometimes we miss an amazing moment which comes into our lives. We only see it later. Other times we're just too sad, tired, or disappointed to see it. But it becomes clear at a later time. Sometimes we need to get to a point where we are giving it all up to God. And then God does something amazing in our lives. But anything, any moment, no matter how mundane it may seem at that moment, can have the potential to be a moment where God reaches into our lives and does the miraculous. Amen. Alright, uh, you guys know this one real well, so let's sing it together. And uh, again, stay for a while afterwards. You want? We have some of the uh, uh, birthday girls. Maybe some of the greatest treats. Uh, a few there, and I got time afterwards to just chat and catch up to some of you. So uh, please stand up. This is the last one. As we go, may your spirit go.